Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to use keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, and of course, don't forget to share with your friends through social media. Just click on share. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any videos coming up in the future. And to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is to use my complete training course, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. If you follow my channel for a while, you know that I don't tend to use keyboard shortcuts that much in my training videos. Now, that's not because I don't like keyboard shortcuts. I think they're great. It's just that I think that demonstrating on a video is easier to see what I'm talking about and what I'm demonstrating by showing everything on the screen instead of using those keyboard shortcuts. So it's just a teaching technique as opposed to my feeling about the shortcuts, which are great. Let me tell you about a few of my favorite shortcuts and also I'm going to be giving you a link to a file that I put together. I need to bring that up right here. There you go. A whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts in here for Photoshop Elements three pages of these things so lots and lots and lots of great keyboard shortcuts and there's a download link for this you'll find that link in the description let me just show you some of my favorite ones in here first off right down here bottom left hand corner we have our colors i'm just going to change these colors to a couple of different colors in here just doesn't really matter what just a couple of different things there so one of the nicest little keyboard shortcuts to use is if you want to put these back to their defaults when I'm doing my videos, I always just click on that button right there so you can see exactly what it is I'm doing. The other way is just to hit the D key. Like that, it just returns those to their default colors. So that's hit the D key to give you those default colors. Now it doesn't matter what colors are down here, we'll go back to this standard black and white. You also don't need to have any other key in there, no control, do anything like that, just the D key, and it gives you those default colors. Another useful one right down here, is the X key. Just tap on the X key and it's going to reverse those colors just like that. Tap it again and it's back again. So you can go back and forth on your foreground and background color just by tapping on the X key. Now of course tapping on these keys like this won't work if you happen to be using the text tool over here. Just bring this up. I've had the type tool up here and I typed in one of those keys it would then show me something here on the screen instead of using it for the keyboard shortcut. So just keep in mind a lot of these keyboard shortcuts won't work if you are putting in type. So, you know, here's D's. Instead of bringing my default colors and here's the X's, instead of reversing those, it's just typing those in. So that's the only time when these really won't work is if you're typing. Aside from that, everything should be working out just fine. So there you go. Two really useful ones. The D key for your default colors and the X key to go back and forth, just to switch those back and forth. There are quite a few more useful one key keyboard shortcuts and they're for your tools over here on the left hand side. And if you just hover for a second over a tool, you get a little pop up in there and notice that letter to the right of the name. That's the keyboard shortcut for that tool. Let's come down here to brush. It's a pretty standard one. That's the B key. Now it's showing you those in caps, but it doesn't have to be capitalized. Let's say I wanted to move to the brush. Just hit the B key and it takes me down to the brush. It's that easy. And up here, this is our Move tool, and that's the V key, as you can see right there. So I'll hit the V key, and we're back to the Move tool, back to the B key, back to the Brush tool. Now something else about these. Now all of these have keyboard shortcut keys. There's an S for your Stamp tool. There's a J for your Spot Healing tool. Smart Brush is F. Your Gradient down here is a G, G for Gradient. Pencil tool is an N. Your type tool is T and so forth. Now something else about these things. Now the brush tool here is B. Watch what happens as I tap on the B key. It just cycles through all of the three different brushes. So you click on it once to take you to the tool, click it again, it will then cycle you through. Now the type tool has quite a few options in here. There are actually seven brushes in here under the type tool. And as you can see here, the shortcut key for that is a T, as you'd guess. And if I just tap on that T button, it's going to cycle through all of those different text tools or type tools. So the keyboard shortcut, let's go up here first up to our move tool. 
keyboard shortcut T takes us to the type tool and then as I type it cycles through. So kind of double duty here with these shortcut keys for your tools in that they take you to the tool and then they'll cycle through any options for those tools, any additional tools hiding underneath that. It's easy to see which ones have additional tools. You see this little kind of triangle up right hand corner there. Pretty small but it's there. If you see that triangle that means there are more tools hiding underneath that original tool. So all of these have their own keyboard shortcuts. You can find them easily. Just hover for a second and you'll see the tool. There it is. And then the keyboard shortcut after the name of the tool. Here's our magic wand tool. And that's the A. The I tool is a Y. Smart brush F. I'm just going straight down here. And the R for the blur tool and so forth. Now all of these of course have their keyboard shortcuts. Let me bring back up our list right here. If I scroll to the top the first page of this shows you the tools, left hand side, little view over here, little icons over there, and then here is the tool, or the keyboard rather, to bring that tool up using the keyboard shortcut. Notice I have both PC and Macintosh, Windows and Macintosh shortcuts. They're almost exactly the same in almost all cases. Only real difference is if I scroll down here a little bit, if we get here to where it has a control key plus a letter or something else. That's going to be the command key on the Mac. It's the exact same key, exact same place on the keyboard. It's just that Windows calls it control, Macintosh calls it command. Don't ask me why, but there you go. Those two different options. Also on the Windows keys, if it's an alt key, Macintosh calls it an option key. Exact same thing, exact same key, exact same spot on the keyboard. They're just named different. So we have all these great keyboard shortcuts to bring up your tools. Now what I'd recommend is if you tend to use one tool or two tools a lot, those are good keyboard shortcuts to memorize. There's no reason to memorize everything, but if you're always going back to the paint bucket, for instance, always going back to the gradient, I tend to use those a lot, then memorizing those keyboard shortcuts is not a bad idea. Okay, let's go back again to our file in here. Let me show you just a few more. A couple of keys or keyboard shortcuts that use the control key modifier that I tend to use a lot. One is the levels adjustment and it's holding down the control key and clicking on the L key. And that brings up the levels adjustment right there. So that one's very useful. Another one is the control plus the J key. So a control plus J and that duplicates your layer over here. Also a very, very useful one to memorize. Something else that's really useful are the left and right bracket keys and they're used for making a tool larger or smaller. It's easy to see if I grab the brush tool over here. You can see right there upper right hand corner just to the right there of the cat. That's the size of this brush right now. Now if I hit the left bracket key the size of the brush gets smaller. If I hit the right bracket key the size of the brush gets larger. This is actually much easier to do then by going down to that slider control right down here and changing the size or typing in a size. It's really very, very quick and easy to do. And I tend to do this when I'm doing painting or anything that involves a brush size. If I'm working back and forth on things, I may have my you know, two fingers on the those two keys, the left and the right brackets, then I can go back and forth quickly while I'm working with the tool in here to change the brush size as I need. There we go. You really see it well right there. Now it jumps it in 25 pixel jumps. If you need a smaller jump, obviously you'll have to come down here to make your adjustment in the options. But again, real good keys. That's the left and the right bracket keys. Something else that's really useful in here, using the shift key along with the left or right brackets, you can make your brush harder or softer. Come down here and watch the little sample right down here, little brush sample in the options. I'm going to hold the shift key down and then I'll click on the left bracket. Notice how it makes that softer. If I tap on the right bracket, it goes harder. So those two keys will let you go softer and harder. So that's the shift bracket. So brackets go larger and softer on your brush size and shift bracket goes softer and harder on the brush, right down here, the brush hardness. So two very good shortcut keys to have memorized. A few more real standard ones that I do all the time. Control plus N brings up a new file. Let me just show you that one here. Control plus N gives you your new file dialog box right there. 
Control plus S is a save. It will save the file. Control S, just like that, just as a save, brings a save dialog box up. Control P brings up your print dialog. And there it is. Again, another very useful keyboard shortcut to memorize that Control P. Something else also about these keyboard shortcuts, they will work in other programs as well. A lot of these, like the Control N, Control S, and Control P, work in most Windows programs. So they're good ones to learn about. Another couple of ones that are very useful is the Control Z and Control Y. Control Z is undo and Control Y is redo. So let's just do a Control Z here. I just undid our layer copy over there. And a Control Y redoes that last step. So again, real useful ones to have. Control Z for undo and Control Y for redo. Another one that's really popular, one that I use all the time, it's a little set. Control X, Control C, and Control V. That's your cut, copy, and paste. You'll see that right up here under the edit menu. And you see here there's your cut, copy, and paste. Notice also in the menus we have the keyboard shortcuts listed right there just to the right of the name of that particular action right over here, left hand side. Of course these are grayed up because I haven't selected anything. Let's just make a selection in here. I'll grab the marquee tool and let's just do the marquee just like that. There we go. So we have something selected. And now there's a selection on here. I can use those cut, copy, and paste. And again, cut is control X, copy, control C, and paste, control V. This will be selectable once I have something cut or copied. So really useful. So here's our control C. That just copied. Let's make a new layer up here. And then paste is your control V, as you can see right there. Let's just do that. Control V, and there's that copy. If I hide these two layers, you can see there's that layer copied. Let's just do a select on this one. Select all is control A. You can see it right over there, control A. So I'll do that one, do a, a select all. That selects the whole contents of that layer. And then we'll do a control X. And that's a cut. Now note that it's a cut, not just a delete, because a delete just gets rid of it. A cut cuts it off the page, but puts it onto the clipboard, so it's still on the clipboard. So if I do a control V, we get it back again. It's still there on the clipboard. Okay, one more I want to point out to you, a real nice one in here. Let's just make a selection of this one. This is a kind of a, a keyboard shortcut and mouse bit. And that's a control click on the icon over here for your layer, your layer thumbnail. The last one I want to show you here, again, really useful. And that is right here, the deselect, control D. So let's do a control D and a deselects. Now again, you've seen me always go to the menus in my training. And that's just to make it very, very obvious what it is I'm doing. If I say deselect and I go up here and click on deselect, then it's real obvious what I've done. And for people who are hearing impaired, possibly, for people with foreign languages and so forth, it helps them also to get through the video. If they can actually see what I'm doing up here instead of waiting for those little pop-ups of the keyboard shortcuts. So I'll still be sticking with very few shortcuts in my training. But keep in mind that as you get more and more familiar with Photoshop Elements, it's a good idea to begin learning some of these keyboard shortcuts to make working much quicker and much more convenient. And again, I have this file down here. There it is. There's a link for this. It's on my page, my support page for this video, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button and, of course, share. And also don't forget to subscribe as well. And don't forget to take a look at my training. Also right down there again in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.